All right. Hi, my name is Kirsten Brown, and I conducted research on the use of music and finger castanets to promote hand control in children with autism. I'm going to first go over some definitions to help better explain some of the materials and objectives I used during my research. The first thing I used were finger castanets. These are musical instruments that are made of two shells put together that make a sound when clipped. A picture is shown in the PowerPoint that shows exactly what I used um, in my research activity. The second thing I used were snap buttons. These buttons are snapped together instead of fastened. They're commonly used on shirts or children's pants. The specific one I used, I actually made um, from just a set of buttons, piece of fabric and a piece of cardboard to make it more stable at one end because uh, fabric's kind of flimsy, so I just wanted to make sure there was some, some stability in it. And then the final thing is hand control, which is the ability to accurately use and manipulate objects in daily life that are functional. Now I'm going to go in some research conducted by some previous authors um, about how beneficial music can be to music and movement. This research also supports my research. Walser looked at how music can motivate children with autism between the ages of four and six. There were nine participants. Six were placed in a music and movement group and four were placed in a movement group. They found that there were improvements in children's movements with the music because they did 45 minute sessions a week for six weeks. Both groups follow the same schedules and same routines. So it made it easier to track the data. They also found some improvements in fine motor skills, manual coordination, and overall body coordination as well. Kern, Wakeford, and Aldridge used, they used music, interventions to improve self-care tasks in children with autism. They focused on one participant, a three-year-old boy with autism. They did two conditions um, as, their, as an alternating, alternating treatment design. The first condition was using a song for following directions, and the second condition was just using lyrics without any song following the self-care directions. Each condition was, was presented on alternate days and both conditions offered the same task and wording. The tasks they focused on were hand washing, toileting, and cleaning up. Hand washing and toile toile toileting improved with song and lyrics and cleaning up improved with the song significantly more than the lyric intervention. Now I'm gonna go over my hypothesis and the variables involved. I, I, I hypothesize that by using music and finger castanets, children with autism will be able to improve their hand control. The independent variable is the treatment received. So the baseline phase, which was snapping a button using hand control, and the intervention phase, which was using music and finger connect castanets to promote that hand control for snapping the buttons. The dependent variable was the amount of time in seconds it took the child to snap the button together. Now I'm gonna go into the method, so materials, participants, procedure. So for participants, I had three children between the ages of four and six who were recruited from the Meredith Autism Program. Child A was a female, age four. Child B was a male, age six. And child C was a male, age five. There was compensation in the form of getting to play with Legos or Play-Doh for reinforcement from the study, as well as, as, well as the possible benefits of hand control improvements. All parents received an informed consent form to read and fill out and were informed of all the ethical conditions according to the American Psychological Association. The children were also asked to participate 
before each of the sessions and responded either verbally or gestures with gestures towards the activity. Now the method and procedures and materials. The materials I used was a pair of finger cast knit for each of the participants, a snap button on a piece of fabric for each participant, a stopwatch timer, and the YouTube video Baby Shark. For the finger cast nets and buttons, I made sure that each of them had their own set of cast nets and button because due to the pandemic, there's I wanted to make sure that there was no use of the same materials. Um, the procedure was a multiple baseline design. A multiple baseline design means that each of the children lasted in the baseline and intervention, intervention in staggering days. So child A, the ba their baseline was one day and their intervention was seven days. For child B, the baseline was for two days and the intervention was for six. And child C, baseline was for three days and intervention was for five. The study lasted for eight total sessions for each participant. There's a maximum of five minutes per session. Um, this is just the estimated, but it didn't last more than five minutes. Now I'm going to go into a little more detail about what took place during the baseline and intervention phases. For baseline, the child was timed for how long it took them to snap the button together. If the child did not snap the button within one minute or 60 seconds, least to most intrus intrusive prompting was used until they were successful. Least to most intrusive prompting means that I started with either verbal, gesture, or modeling cues. And if that didn't work, I went hand over hand, which is called physical prompting. And, that, and all the data was then recorded. The baseline sessions lasted approximately three minutes long. For the intervention, the activity was held in a room and the child listened to the song, Baby Shark while clapping their finger cast nets together to promote that hand control. To make it easier for the child to understand, I also had a pair of finger cast nets, clapping them together to initiate some possible imitation for the child. If the child did not mimic the motions, I used the highest level of prompting and I faded. So if they needed more gestures, I gave them more gestures. If they needed a little bit of physical prompting, that's what I did. And then I, I decreased my prompting from there. So if I was at physical, then I went to just gestures and modeling or just verbal until they got the hang of it. And I wasn't very specific on how they clapped them together. They could either clap it using their four fingers and thumb with one hand, or they could use two hands opening and closing them together because either way, it still promoted hand control. And for some, for the younger child who was four, it was easier to use two hands instead of one. If the child did not mimic those motions, I used the highest level of prompting, like I said, and after each of the sessions, I asked, or after each of the activity of the baby shark, I asked each of the child, again, to do the button activity where the amount of time it takes them to snap the button together in seconds was recorded. And if the child did not snap the button within one minute or 60 seconds, least to most intrusive prompting was used and recorded. The intervention session lasted about five minutes. Uh, that's just because the baby shark activity was put in place, so it took a little bit longer. And for both baseline and intervention, uh, reinforcement re reinforcements were used to motivate uh, the participants to complete the activity and feel like they, you know, got a reward after they accomplished and worked really hard on um, clapping the finger cast nets and um, snapping the button together. Now I'm going to go into the results. So here is the graph of the multiple baseline design. And so we have participant A at the top, participant B, and then participant C. And you can see the staggering days that the sessions took place. And as you can see, there isn't really any consistency with the data. Um, we did see some improvements some days and not so much improvement some other days, um, which, 
showed that we didn't really have any significant data indicating that my hypothesis was supported. Through my observations, though, during the sessions, I found that the sessions went, as the sessions went on, the children were more motivated to do the activity. They were more excited about the baby shark activity and reinforcements than they were at the beginning. They were very hesitant to, to come with me and until they realized that, oh, this is fun. You know, the finger cast nuts make a fun noise and they love the song Baby Shark. So it was interesting to, to observe and watch them um, get more excited about learning how to, you know, control uh, their hand movements. Um, so for discussion, unfortunately, my hypothesis was not supported and that was due to several limitations. Time was probably the biggest limitation I had. I was only able to do eight sessions, which seems like, you know, a fair bit amount, but in order for a child to fully grasp something, it would probably take a little bit longer. Um, so if I had more sessions and kept them motivated, I believe that I would have more conclusive results at that point. Uh, for participants, um, if I would have had more of them, that would have also been pretty beneficial in the conclusions and the results. And age, there was only four, five, and six. So um, that limited the generalizability of the research. And so I would probably need to widen the age group. Location, we only selected from one program. Um, so widening that would probably be beneficial as well. And then due to the pandemic, um, some of the data was not able to be collected. Um, I'll go back to the graph. And as you can see for child A and child B, there's no data um, on day six. And so we missed out on some of that data. Um, so for future research, I really want to increase the number of sessions, add in more participants, include a wider variety of ages, and include participants from different locations. This was a very, very interesting research, but I hope to continue and maybe, you know, fix these limitations and uh, do some future research on it. Um, so thank you guys so much for listening. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at klbrown at email.meredith.edu.